stop, stop, stop. You're going to take someone's eye out. Besides, you're saying it wrong. It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. Hey guys, welcome back to the BNB Entertainment. I am Viper. Hope you guys are doing great. So, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna rank the Harry Potter movies. Uh, we have already ranked the Harry Potter books. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, the video link will be down in the description. Please go to watch it. Uh, hope you like that video. So, I am a huge Harry Potter fan. I have been a Harry Potter fan for now probably like 6 to 7 years now. And I have watched each Harry Potter movies for like 10 times now. Uh, whenever I am... I am bored I just usually shift to Harry Potter it is a great to watch whenever you're bored or anything so uh, today I'm gonna rank all the eight Harry Potter movies according to my opinion from the uh, from the bad to the great worst to the bad to the best and uh, the eight movies which I will be ranking are Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter and the half Blood Prince, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Okay, so... Let's start the ranking without wasting any more time. Okay, so we'll start from the bottom rankings. So, uh, of course, all these movies are great. Uh, I like all them. I like all the movies, and there's no movie I would actually hate or anything. But if I had to rank these, I would rank them as follows. So. At the 8th position, uh, I'll rank Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Better be Gryffindor! Uh, yes, uh, this Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is the first Harry Potter movie. It was released in 2001 uh, and was directed by Chris Columbus. Of course, Chris Columbus started the Harry Potter series. He directed the first two films of the Harry Potter series. And they were great. And uh, if you uh, see, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is actually, and if you compare it to all other movies, it is a truest adaption, as I would say, compared to the truest adaption to the books. Yes, of course, it was the first movie. So, of course, the movie was not a guaranteed hit or a guaranteed success, unlike the other movies, which were considered success because of the previous movies. Because of this movie's success, the others' movie were also considered success, but this movie was not considered success. So, yes, it was a trial movie. It was an experiment uh, did by Chris Columbus and J.K. Rowling, and it was a great hit. But if you compare it to the other movies, it it is just an experiment, so I'll rank this one at 8. Yes, maybe I would have ranked it 7, but uh, I have ranked it 8. You'll know why I have ranked it 8 rather than 7. So, uh, I rank Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone at 8. So, the movie I'm gonna rank at number 7 is... The second movie of the Harry Potter franchise, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. You, you're the heir of Slytherin. Okay, so Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets was released a year later at the Philosopher's Stone in 2002. It was also directed by Chris Columbus. Uh, uh, 
these both movies were directed the first and second were directed by chris columbus and it was a great uh, direction of course uh to be honest uh i would actually say uh, philosopher stone is a bit better than uh, chamber of secret in movie but uh when i started watching harry potter Uh, the first ever movie which i watched of harry potter was harry potter and the chamber of secrets i skipped directly the second movie so i am a little biased towards the second movie so yes it has great scenes of course like the flying car scenes it is one of my favorite scenes it is a fun comedy scene of course where ron and harry uh, steal the weasley family car and drive uh, illegally to hogwarts in the flying car so it is a great movie to it is it has a uh, uh, very fun scenes and it is a great movie but if you compared it to all the other movies i think it would have been at the, my eighth rank but because i am a biased towards it i'll rank it 7 so i rank harry potter and the chamber of secrets 7 Okay so the movie I'm going to rank 6 I don't know I think it may shock some of the guys uh, it may be a surprise but the movie I'm going to rank 7 is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part 1 Of you who haven't taken Polyjuice potion before fair warning it tastes like goblin piss I've lost few experiences with that dear madai Just trying to diffuse the tension Identical. Not yet, you're not. Okay. So, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part One was released in 2010. It was. It is the second last movie of the franchise. It is the end of the beginning. It is the beginning of the end. Sorry, I. It is the beginning of the end, and it was directed by David Yates. So yes. Uh, the reason I would rank Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows uh, part one seven is, to be honest, it bored me a little bit. All the uh, the scenes where Harry, Hermione, Ron were in the hunt, yes, uh, the scene the story was amazing, but they could have done a bit some of the scenes. It was just. a little bit boring uh, for the three of them just roaming here and there without any actual context without what they know without knowing what they truly want just fighting between themselves and of course uh where uh, if you know the dance scene which harry and hermione danced in the deathly hallows part 1 which actually didn't happen in the chamber of secret uh, sorry sorry sir which didn't happen uh, in the books because which didn't happen in the books which was added in the movies because people shipped harry and hermione so they thought of adding a scene of them but to be honest i don't ship harry and hermione i think uh, they are they are they would make a great sibling pair but not romantically so if you have you read the books you would know ki harry was never harry never received love from someone not from his uncle aunt anything and he never truly felt the family love or anything so i don't so i don't think he would knew how to express love yet which they showed how he expressed comfort to hermione which i don't think harry would have in the books which he did of course uh, of all he was doing in the books was just slip uh, looking at ginny's dot in the modern map uh, which didn't 
which they of course did show much in the movies so i would these were some scenes and of course they could have added a few of voldemort scenes a few scenes of dumbledore's relation to the horcruxes to the past of voldemort they could have added a bit of that scenes so i would have i would rank harry potter and deathly hallows part 1 at 7 6 okay the movie i'm going to rank fifth is harry potter and the half blood prince Prince was released in 2009 and it was directed by David Yates. Uh The Half-Blood Prince is uh is one of my favorite books. Of course, I love The Half-Blood Prince book. It is a great book. But if uh if you see the movie version, yes, it is a great movie, but uh to a book fan of a Harry Potter Half-Blood Prince you will know ki they left out many many important scenes of the book like uh, they literally uh left out all the important tom riddle back story or the story of tom riddle's mother his father why he hated the muggles the real reason all the back story which was left out in the movie yes they couldn't have added all of course it is just a movie compared to a book but still they could have added a bit scenes which the movie mostly contained uh, the movie were uh, this movie contained a lot of teenage drama you could say uh, teenage romances problem all the harry ginny you know, ron lavender Hermione, uh, Cormac, and all Hermione, Ron also you could say uh, a little bit movie. Uh, this movie was also on the characters' romance. So yes, it was uh, the romance was also important, but I think they could have added uh, Tom's a uh, little bit backstory, which could have uh, increased a bit movie book feeling in the movie. of course half blood prince had the best cinema uh, cinematography in all the movies 101% uh, so yes there were a few fun scenes but i would rank harry potter and the half blood prince fifth okay the movie i'm gonna rank fourth is uh, going to surprise a lot of you guys uh, my, uh, most this movie ranks in uh, heavily the top 2 in most of my friends ranks so but i'm going to rank it 4 is harry potter and the deathly hallows part 2 
Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 was released in 2011 and was directed by David Yates. It is the final movie at the Harry Potter fr- uh, storyline of the Harry Potter franchise. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't say franchise because of all the Fantastic Beasts uh, movies are also part of the Harry Potter franchise. But if you see the main Harry Potter movies, it uh, is the last so the reason I would rank it, I wouldn't uh, consider Deadly Hallows Part 2 in my top 3 is the story starts, uh, the movie starts in a very fast uh, way. You could see the scenes happening in a very fast like manner like uh, the scenes where they uh, steal from uh, Gringotts, where they escape through a dragon where they enter into Hogsmeade, then Hogwarts. It's like happening too fast, which uh, the watch, uh, which the watchers may sometimes get uh, confused a bit, which they might not go through with the pace. Yes, it is not a big problem, but uh, they could have slowed a bit, but the pace was a little bit fast, I would say. Of course, uh, there were many great scenes in the movie the harry and the dumbledore conversation in the king's cross after harry's death is also great and uh, uh, the final battle the one thing which i hoped after reading the books which i didn't knew earlier like in the movies the how voldemort dies is he vanishes in through air through dust or something like that but in the movies he just drops dead uh, in the books sorry in the books he just drops dead like it shows in the books like Voldemort or Tom Riddle was no he was just a simple human being he just died on the spot just like any other human being his body was there he was just a human being but in the movies, he was just like he was an evil character or something. A evil this which uh, just vanishes in the dust or anything dies that way. I think it would have been nice if he also would have died just like his whole uh, body would have just left there. And, and like just vanishing in the air. And yeah. Uh, it would have been this but yes it's a great movie and uh, one of my favorite scenes of this movie is uh, Snape's memories of course always and who wouldn't like that scene the true story of Severus Snape portrayed brilliantly by Alan Rickman we are a great fan of all the movie fans of Harry Potter a great, great fan of Severus Snape because of that scene yes a bit uh, book readers would not appreciate Severus Snape that much but uh, the movie readers are a huge fan of Severus Snape in the end uh, so I would rank Harry Potter and Leslie Hallows part 2 at the 4th rank so let's step now to the top 3 we go to the 3rd rank the bronze so the bronze, the third rank I would rank is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Harry Potter. No, no. Harry Potter. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire was released in 2005 and was directed by Mike Newell. Uh, yes, uh, of course, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire the Triwizard Tournament. Uh, if you don't have, if you haven't watched my. Uh, ranking the Harry Potter books video it is a spoiler but I had ranked Harry Potter in the Goblet of Fire first in my book series but 
uh, in the movies i'm going to rank it third so yes of course uh, harry potter and goblet of fire is an amazing movie to watch all the growing uh, up of the harry potter characters if you say the year harry potter characters needed a haircut and uh, many great scenes the yule ball the maze the cedric degree's death everything connected the rise of voldemort where we first time see the true uh, voldemort in his form unlike where we see with uh, in in the first movie with quirrell back or in the second where we see the young tom riddle we see voldemort in action so yes goblet of fire is a great movie uh, i won't say there were any faults or anything but it would be ranked third because the top 2 are top 2 and uh, my favorite scene in the goblet of fire would there are many scenes but the one i laugh at the most is one Fred asks Angelina to go to the Yule Ball with her. <laughs> it is a great scene. I think I am sure most of you also like it. So I'm gonna rank Goblet of Fire at third. It takes bronze. So moving up to the runner-up, to the second, to the silver, I'm gonna rank Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. So weak. It was foolish of you to come here tonight, Tom. The orders are on their way. By which time I shall be gone, and you shall be dead. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix was released in two thousand and seven, and was directed by David Yates. Uh, so, if you see Harry Potter and Order of Phoenix, it is the smallest movie in all the movies of Harry Potter, considering that the book is the largest book in the Harry Potter book series. The it is a big book than even book uh, bigger book than the Deathly Hallows, but in the movies it is the shortest film. Uh, Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix. included some great great scenes especially the final showdown between dumbledore and voldemort uh, where they both fight epically the epic duel between them while harry just watches how they how the two masters fight against each other and uh, we uh, the true dark movie starts from the order of phoenix where harry get where harry is possessed you could say by voldemort because spoiler because harry is a horcrux and uh, how he is possessed type where voldemort can uh, see can roam in his mind because harry is a horcrux and of course introduction to bellatrix restrange uh, one of the most hated characters of the harry potter series and also how could we forget the most hated character of the harry potter series dolores umbridge professor umbridge uh, well one thing we should learn from her that we should not tell lies but not the way she taught <laughs> so yes i would the uh, order of the phoenix is just a great movie uh, uh, it contains uh, a bit Uh, there are different kinds of scenes, uh, emotional or serious dies, and uh, I loved Daniel Radcliffe's acting in that movie as Harry Potter. It felt uh, the emotions showed by him were truly amazing. So I'm gonna rank Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire in the second, taking the silver. So finally, we have left with a one movie. Uh, most of you have guessed it by now which movie we are left with the taking the gold it's going to be harry potter and the prisoner of azkaban harry expecto patronum
Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban was released in 2004. It is the third movie of the franchise and was directed by Alfonso Cuarón. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing which I loved most in Harry Potter: Prisoner of Azkaban is is that all the characters had great haircuts in the movies. Which compared to the fourth Goblet of Fire, uh, which everyone needed a haircut, they probably had a best haircut in the Prisoner of Azkaban. So yes, the Prisoner of Azkaban is a great movie. I rank it first. It we get in- introduced to Sirius Black, the Godfather of Harry Potter, which is a murderer uh, from the start. Is a murderer to Harry Potter in the beginning. But later he realized how he was framed, and the real murderer of his parents was not Sirius Black, but uh, was Peter Pettigrew. How he snitched on them uh, because he wanted power and was scared of Voldemort. We this is not in the movies; it is in the books. But I get a bit confused because this. But yes, Prisoner of Azkaban is a great movie. The Bogart scene is fabulous, where we get uh, to see the werewolf. The Remus is a werewolf. We understand a bit. It is a hint you could understand, and uh, of course we get introduced to Sirius Black, a main main character of the Harry Potter franchise. And uh, to be honest, why I prefer Prisoner of Azkaban more is unlike a uh, Philosopher's Stone or Chamber of Secrets. Philosoph, uh, Prisoner of Azkaban is a start where Harry starts to realize why he's the chosen one, what's happening in his life, and Unli- unlike the first two movies, we're just fighting monsters, fighting the bosses, fighting this. He starts to understand what he's fighting, whom he's fighting, and why he's fighting. It is a bit, you could say, upgrade where he starts to realize a maturity, you could say. So that's why. And of course, Prisoner of Azkaban is a great, great movie. You should definitely watch it. You should watch all the movies. But if I would, I would, if I had to choose between all the movies, I'd choose Prisoner of Azkaban as to be my favorite. So yes, that was my ranking for Harry Potter movies. Uh, if you, uh, if you disagree or you have any other views of your ranking, please comment down in your video. Uh, I would love to hear about your opinion, uh, and uh, comment down any other book series, movie series you want us to rank. Uh, I would definitely rank them. So that's it for today, guys. Hope we meet again soon with a new video, with a new idea, with the new rankings. So see you. Hi. Lord Voldemort went to Godric's Hollow to kill Harry, and Lily Potter cast herself between them. The curse rebounded. When that happened, a part of Voldemort's soul latched itself under the only living thing it could find: Harry himself. Well, there's a reason Harry can speak with snakes. There's a reason he could look into Lord Voldemort's mind. A part of Voldemort lives inside him. So when the time comes, the boy must die. Always.